Um, can you ladies tell us a little bit more about your business and how you got started into reselling luxury goods? Of yeah, course. absolutely. Um, so my own background, since I graduated from college, I was with another small business that uh, did a very similar uh, business platform, um, but it was a retail store. It was a small business. I was there for 11 years and um, then the pandemic hit. <laughs> and I, I didn't really think I was ever going to leave that business, but everything shut down and the pandemic changed everything. Yeah. Uh, we both have young kids, so we had to be home with our children. We had to homeschool them. That and, was a tragedy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my sister was uh, also working for that company yeah. for about a year and a half, about a year and a half. So we both had the experience. Um, again, because it was a small business, I was able to sort of touch everything when it came to building the business, the retail location, um, authentication, mm -hmm. quality control, uh, social media, we sort of touched everything. So we had that knowledge when we decided mm -hmm. to go into business together and do it ourselves, mm -hmm. really for survival, right? Yeah. I mean, the pandemic yeah. uh, changed and all of our priorities. And everyone told us, you are absolutely nuts if you're going to start a business in the height of the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. But honestly, we just kind of went with our guts yeah. and we were like, let's do it. And we started with cleaning out our personal closets, cleaning out my mother's closet and my grandmother's closet. And we yeah. started, we were like the four founding members of yeah. <laughs> our business. Um, and, you know, social media really is something that Erica especially has always been very good at. I come, I'm more of like the administrative side, mm -hmm. but my degree is in broadcast journalism. And so when we first started, it was like, well, we have to go live. Yeah. And Which my sister was freaking out. Terrified. <laughs> I was terrified. I was like, but when you're live, you engage with people and you build a relationship with people. And so going live really, I think, yeah to help take us to a different level. Yeah, very quickly very too. Quickly. Um, we've been very lucky and we're so grateful um, that people have taken to us and trust us and yeah. uh, both on the consignment side um, and also on the selling side. Got it, cool. Yeah, I, that's a common thread I think um, that I've heard that the pandemic was kind of an impetus for a lot of people to get into um, luxury resale. And um, as you ladies were just saying, you both were already wearing so many different hats. So um, you're, you know, you, you know, wh why not go for it, you know? Um, sure. Cool, awesome. Um, so um, my next question is um, what social media platforms are you currently active on? And do you find that you need to create like different types of content um, for each? <laughs> yes. So yeah. we are on very, very active on Instagram. Instagram is pretty much our home mm -hmm. or I call it our home. Yeah. And then we are also active on TikTok. Our Instagram does connect to Facebook. Mm -hmm. But, and so we post everything over on Facebook as well. And we do have inquiries that come from Facebook, but, um, we're not as active on Facebook as we are on Instagram and TikTok. Mm -hmm. Um, the content that we, you, that we do on TikTok is much more, um, coming from like a funnier, you know, we use the trending sounds. Right. We try to fuse together, you know, a trending sound that is funny with, what we do yeah um and we're more likely to get on the for you page and uh yeah for sure yeah. and i think like with tiktok it really drives people in mm -hmm. and then they go over to instagram which is where we do most of our selling yeah i would say instagram is more of like our professional the, you know commerce uh support yeah. platform whereas tiktok is sort of where we're um having fun with people it's sort of like having those two personalities the personality mm -hmm. at the office and then the personality oh. with your friends at happy happy hour yeah right yeah. It's, it's sort of the the difference there the way that we behave the things that we say the way we talk and it's nice totally. because a it's lot nice. of our followers follow us on both and yeah. sometimes we're able to take the content from tiktok and include it over on instagram right, and right. So you can like repurpose it and everything yeah yeah. I, it reminds me of that meme. I don't know if you have seen it. It's like um, a grid kind of, and it's like, this is you on LinkedIn. This is you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. 
cool, cool. But I do like to think like when we go live yeah. on Instagram is really when people get the truest version of us. Mm -hmm. And um, we have also done live collaboratively with TikTok. So we'll have TikTok live and Instagram live at the same time. Um, and you know, on, the thing with TikTok is that it's not necessarily um, commercialized yet. I mean, like yeah. for e-commerce businesses. Mm -hmm. So Instagram, I think, has really done a great job of helping support small businesses. For sure. The landscape of social media changes so quickly, right? The algorithm changes. Some yeah. things work, some things mm -hmm. don't. And especially when you're starting, you sort of have to, it's kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Right. Um, for us, we found that posting maybe five times a week in terms of like a beautiful image or um, information, something informational, mm -hmm. um, a resource that is very um, helpful for us. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of going live at the beginning, we went live once or twice a week, mm -hmm. um, particularly because we were just starting, right? And we, we didn't, didn't have, have product, a lot of product. We didn't have a lot of product. Yeah. Going live was really just a way we would do like Q and A's. Mm -hmm. get to know us let's right, build right. relationship I think that that's a common misconception of small businesses it's like well I don't have anything to show but you can go live and the people that stick around will want to build a relationship mm -hmm. with you and you open up the floor for people to ask questions and you answer them genuinely and then you can build on that so that when product does come in mm -hmm. you go live and they feel a trust with you yeah and remember at the beginning of at the beginning of the pandemic, midsummer in 2020, mm -hmm. everybody was home. And so we got the message a lot that we were the only people that they interacted with that day. Yeah. Are they, you know, we got a lot of beautiful messages from people, especially coming out of last summer. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you girls, because we were all home or we were home alone. Yeah, you got us through. You like, got us through. And, you know, it felt like they were socializing with us. And I think that even though we're um, hopefully, um, back to whatever a new normal is and everyone is starting to travel again and go out. Um, you know, I, th I still think there's an opportunity there to get on live, build relationships because people are always going to, you know, take some days and stay home. Yeah. So, and also or another, another tip mm -hmm. too is, um, yes, be absolutely genuinely yourself, but mm -hmm. also have a plan in place. Yes. Don't go live just, you know, without a plan right. don't just do it on the whim like, yeah don't do it on the whim have, like, plan. have some kind of plan um if you're going to go live with product make sure that you have a price sheet in front of you so you can refer back to it because people will jump on and off and ask questions yeah um, remember that live it's it's sort of like it's not like a movie there's a start time people come in right it's people come in when they log into Instagram or TikTok and they'll see you live and they'll just jump in. So make sure you're reiterating, maybe you have house rules or what what should everyone be expecting at the moment? Exactly. Yeah, there's less like con context when they're just yeah. like jumping in like that. For sure, for sure. Because yeah. I think people can get confused. I think also um, just setting the expectation in terms of, you know, how do you shop? How do we, our, our shopping process is different probably from a lot of other um, businesses, businesses that do the same thing that we do. So, um, you know, try to set that, set that expectation early, how you think is easiest for people to shop and learn about you or what have you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so my next question, I know, um, you, you know, you, uh, got started pretty recently, um, you know, cause of the pandemic, um, was the impetus there, but, um, so I'm assuming, did you use entropy right off the bat um, or is that something, you know, how did you integrate? Um, Very quickly. Yes. Yeah. So right. when we were kind of building our map, our roadmap of how we wanted to stand out, how we wanted to be different from the companies that we knew of at the time yeah. that were doing something similar, you know, I wanted right off the bat, I was yeah. like, listen, there needs to be a way to like have a guarantee and not just say you can trust us we're going to send you our own you know whatever and if it's if it turns out to be not authentic you can send it back that's great but an extra layer of protection that will help make 
people feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, And we started searching. I believe Erica found Entropy. And right away we were like, yes, absolutely. We have to do it. We have to do it because Mm -hmm. to that, at that time, there was really nobody else that we knew of in the industry that was using Entropy at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it just adds an extra layer of just protection for both the company and the the, the, the customer, you know? Yeah, for everyone involved, for sure. Um, uh, I know you mentioned you were, you know, sourcing, um, you know, initially was your own product, your, you know, personal collections, um, your, your mother. Um, do you, um, how do you procure inventory now? We have consigners from across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and internationally. And actually. internationally. Um, and so what we do have is, you know, a contract. And so consigners will ship their items to us. And when we receive them, then we will run them through the Entropy um, software before we process them into our um, consignment system. Okay, great. Yeah, that was my next question. At like what point do you um, authenticate and implement the solution? Oh yeah, we don't put anything. It's the first thing we do. That is the first of many. (laughs) The two thumbs up. (laughs) No, there's no no question. Yeah, Yeah. Um, and if there's ever a question, we don't, it will be sent back. It does not get into our inventory. We've had the product, all kinds of products, um, and, and so many different, uh, brands in our hands at this point over the course of, I guess, a combined 14 years that if it isn't, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. So Mm -hmm. when in doubt, send it back. Mm -hmm. That's just how, that's just how we do business. And honestly, a lot of our customers now, because we've shared a lot of information about Entropy and um, they will say it comes with the certificate, right? I think that our, yeah, our audience, we talk about it a lot. Yeah. Our (laughs) audience has gotten so used to hearing about it and having that, you know, feeling of protection that they're like, oh, it's going to come with the certificate. Yeah. Right. Like they really want that with the bag. Yeah. Right. 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 You're, so you're actively marketing it. You're, you know, talking oh, yeah. about it. Um, mm-hmm. That's great. That's awesome. And you can see, I mean, some of our um, most popular videos, both on reels and on TikTok, involve mm-hmm. entropy. I mean, yeah. people are authenticating truly, the bag. even if they're not interested in handbags per se or procuring items for their collection. It's fascinating, the technology behind Entropy. People are really interested in it and it does feel um, like a like a feather in your cap, right? Like a, a, a form of confidence that I feel like you you can't get by just saying, well, I authenticated it, Monica authenticated it, right? It's, it's technology.